As you look live there, you can see the U.S. Capitol is getting a facelift, uh, some construction ongoing, and there's always concern, as we are five days away from the midterm elections, about possible voter fraud. There have been confirmed cases. In fact, um, there's a new study out by Old Dominion University, and it says this about illegal immigrants voting, quote, the adjusted estimate represents our best guess at the portion of non-citizens who voted. They look back at 2008. The adjusted estimate of 6.4 percent for 2008 is quite substantial and would be associated with 1.2 million non-citizen votes cast in 2008. Uh, there have been a number of different uh, allegations around the country, but 1.2 million votes, they say, cast in 2008 from non-citizens. We're back with the panel. George, there are people who are very concerned about this around the country. How big a deal is this? Well, 1.2 million is a lot of votes, considering we had a presidential election turn on 547 Florida votes, and the 60th vote in the Senate to pass Obamacare came from Al Franken in Minnesota, who won a disputed recount by 312 votes. So these matter. Now, the Attorney General says voter fraud doesn't exist. But then his employer says there's not a smidgen of corruption in the IRS, so we have to take this with a grain of salt. The attorney general says that voter ID laws that exist in 30 states have a disparate impact on whites and blacks, whereas, in fact, the number of whites and blacks, the percentage of whites and blacks is almost identical that do not have photo IDs. Catherine Engelbrecht, whose group True the Vote was one of the principal targets of the IRS and the FBI and OTF and all kinds of people at, uh, harassing them, found 6.9 million people doubly registered, uh, registered in 28 states that they looked at. So these are fairly substantial numbers. That doesn't translate into comparable size voter fraud, but the potential is certainly there. Yeah. You hear about it, Mara. You know that there is a law, Na National Voter Registration Act, uh, passed in 1993. It requires that states remove from their registration list ineligible voters, those who have died or moved away. And there's this book, Obama's Enforcer, about Eric Holder's Justice Department that says the Attorney General has refused to enforce this statute. I guess when you hear this and you get pushback about how big a deal is it, and then you see some of these stats and these studies. Yeah, look. But, you know, if voter fraud is occurring, it's a real problem and it should be prevented. Um, however, you know, on the other side of this, there are people who say that there are tens of thousands of voter registration forms that are not being processed. People who have done everything under the new laws in and fact, the old laws. In a new case in Georgia. Georgia. That says they submitted everything and they haven't gotten their cards because... You know, it's just, is it being slow walked on purpose? I mean, voter, all of this argument about voter fraud and voter suppression is very partisan. It's really hard to know which is the worst problem, you know, voter suppression or voter fraud. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what, what effect it has on the election. It's probably heading to a courtroom in a number of these states. Uh, the governor there, Bobby Jindal, has just come out with a statement. He said, the president's policies with Senator, with, which Senator Landrieu largely supports are unpopular in Louisiana and the other 49 states because they're ill-advised, liberal, and don't work out here in the real world. And his administration has also proven to be incompetent. Trying to blame it on race is ridiculous. Uh, Charles? It's ridiculous, and I think it's also uh, politically fatal. Uh, the first rule of commerce is don't insult your customers. To call the electorate your own people, essentially, to say they are racist or sexist, which is what she said, and that explains my unpopularity, I think is a huge mistake. Mara. Yeah, I think the only thing that was better than I expected about that cut is she didn't use the word racism or sexism. But Mary Landrieu is in a very, very tough race. She's won him before, but this is tougher than anything else she's faced. She's not going to get 50 percent, neither is her opponent, on Tuesday, and it looks like she's going to a runoff. She's a good campaigner. Yeah, People she's like a very good campaigner. There, that's an interesting play for her. But the Democrats are thrown back entirely this election cycle on identity politics. The New York Times ran a story the other day, why does Joni Ernst in Iowa appeal to men? It's inconceivable to them because they think identity. The answer is... Men agree with her, their policies, their ideas. But they just that filter that of identity politics just takes all of that out, and we just saw that practice now in Louisiana. We have four more nights to talk about the midterm elections. We will pick some interesting races going forward. Thank you, panel. That's it for the panel.